What's hey. up? <laughs> hey, we all we wait for that little red that little red banner to come on. We're like going. Oh, there it is. Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are live. As I'm looking at the date of today's last call of the year, my my brain was going to instead of saying hello, saying it's a wrap. <laughs> 2018, it's a wrap. Almost, almost. You guys have. Plenty of time to punch out some volume for some rank advancements to happen this month. So anyway, it's been it's been it a is, good year. It is the last day of the month. Um, and just so all of you guys know, there is no backdating. Do a little housekeeping here at the very beginning of the call. There is no backdating tomorrow or the next day because it's a quarter in. So for those, hey Maria, hey Gary, what's up guys? For those that are wanting to... Uh, get that last second volume in, it has to happen tonight. It cannot happen tomorrow. What's up, everybody? Today's a, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, because it's the last day of the year, it's a Monday, but it's certainly not your typical working Monday, not here in the United States anyway. What's up, Bryce? How are you? What's going on, guys? How, hey, Dawn, how are you? Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, Man, what a year this has been. We're gonna talk a little bit about that, a little bit about looking forward to 2019. What's up, Carrie? How are you? Nice to have our Canadian team and leadership here. What's up, Ed? I'm kind of laughing, you guys, because I can't see any of the comments. I can't see a whole lot of anything. <laughs> I had something happen with my eye, and I actually went back, I thought it was a scratch. I went back to the doctor this morning. They said, no, you have a corneal ulcer. What? So my eyes are not good. So I feel like I'm kind of in space mode here as I'm looking at the phone. <laughs> and you got that little light that shines through the blinds, like right on your face right yeah. there. It, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But anyway, guys, we're happy you guys are here. We're not going to take a bunch of time today, but we do have some really, um, I think, essential thoughts for you to share today. Just considering the day that it is today, the last day of the year, uh, we do fall into certain routines. Uh, no matter if you live in the United States or outside of the United States, there are routines. And you guys know this time of year, people are slowing down a little bit work-wise just because they have, a, have had a few days off, maybe a few days off leading into the next couple days. And it's that time of the year where people you know, are reflecting, maybe goal setting, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how we should be focused as a team and you individually as we move into uh, 2019, but um, you ready to dive into this? Yeah, so we're gonna start with our core value that we're on for this week, which is number seven. seven, lead with kindness. And so you guys, as we think about that core value and how it equates to our business, um, in talking with Brandon this morning and kind of developing the information, we wanted to talk about the significance of leading with kindness in your business, the way that you treat people. You know that we say all the time that when you are sharing this opportunity, it's got to be more about the person than about yourself, right? But today I want to focus a little bit more on your customers because I feel like this is an area that I think we both really could have improved on over the years. Like we didn't put enough value on the customer. We were so focused on looking for business partners that I feel like we've left a lot on the table. And that's unfortunate for a multitude of reasons. Um, one being we know the impact that these products are having on people's lives, um, but there's so much to be gained from customers. And you guys, when you think about customer service, when you go to a department store, um, you know, I think, I think a lot of times ladies can relate with this a little bit more um, because a lot of times we'll frequent the same store, but if there's a salesperson who, you know, takes a, a minute, like at a makeup counter, you know, you buy some makeup and they drop you a little thank you card um, or they ring you up at, or message you and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know the makeup counter's got this promotion going. You can get this free gift when you buy this product that I know that you always buy and just different things like that. When you have somebody in, in that uh, arena do that for you, when you go back to that store, do you or do you not seek out that same sales associate? 
You're like, oh no, um, Tina takes care of me when I'm here. Is she here today? Because you want to make sure that she's going to get the, the commissions off of you know, your sale because of what she's done for you. It's in essence because she has treated you in a special way, like you're a VIP, right? So the question for you is, are you treating your customers like they are VIPs? Because what happens is in doing that... You want to move this way? That light's killing me. It's... It's killing me. It's like right in your ear. I don't... It's killing me. <laughs> Come this way. I don't even see it. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't see it. There are, people, just... there are people messaging like, there's a blue light in Lynette's face. I can't... And you're just rocking it I out. And I'm guys, like, I'm... it's like dead on your eyeball. When I tell you that I'm not <laughs> seeing good, I'm not lying. Now it's gone. See? Okay. So, anyway. You want to treat them like VIP customers because for one, they are, and for two, that is going to create a loyalty to you, right? If you're the one who's thanking them for their orders, letting them know when their special's going on, making sure that their auto ships are working the way that they want them to, don't you think that down the road, if at some point something changes in their life and they're interested in this business, they're gonna call you? as opposed to maybe their next door neighbor or their girlfriend who just finally enrolled in Life Vantage. So here's, the, here's what I want you to think about. Here's what I want you to implant in your brain. Loyalty creates royalty. The loyalty from your customers is going to create royalty commissions. And we all want royalty commissions. <laughs> So that's the value in treating your customers in a good way. It's going to come back tenfold, no doubt, because they're going to appreciate you and the VIP service that you give them. And as maybe, maybe they'll even share with some of their friends um, about the services or even the opportunity. You never know where it'll lead. So that's a goal for you this year. If you've not been treating your customers, like VIPs, do it. It's time. Loyalties create royalty. Don't forget that. Yes, I love that um, because I, we, Lynette's right. When we first started this business, we missed that one. Um, we, we missed the importance of customer appreciation or customers in general. Um, in fact, we used to be kind of proud that we didn't sign any customers up. We <laughs> only so signed silly. distributors up. And um, there's something to be said though for our mindset going in that I think does create really rapid growth. And that is we were always focused on the business, which eventually people get there that join a business. But we know now in hindsight that the majority of people that join our business, not ours like Lynette now, but ours as a, a, a profession, join as customers first just to try the product, okay? And if you can create an experience while they're trying the product that is beyond their expectations and it's fun, they probably will join you in the business just because it's something fun to do, even if the product doesn't blow their wig back, right? And so if you can give them that type of an experience, like we all want, we all want that customer service. We We've got a vehicle, and that drives an SUV that I think is probably the worst money we've ever spent on a vehicle. It, was an ex it wasn't a crazy expensive vehicle, but it was the most we've ever spent on a vehicle. And it gets horrible gas mileage. The motor's not very powerful. I mean, I, don't, I go on and on and on, but their customer service is crazy. It rocks. Like, it rocks. Lynette comes back and like, I just roll up, and they give me one just like it, and it's clean, and... Their customer service is insane. And the other day I was thinking like, we may end up with another one of these just because of the customer service. Like it's such a great part of their business, right? So we need to be that for our customers and make that experience something that creates the loyalty, that creates the royalty. Now, if we can duplicate that in our business, you guys... Uh, our organization, Team True Blue, is now in excess of over 120,000 ID numbers. 120,000 ID numbers. I can promise you the vast majority are not on active auto ships. Okay? So if we just won back 10% of that, holy cow. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. And it's 
mainly because we didn't set out early enough with a mindset like this. And hopefully we can move the needle a little bit in 2019 back that way. I'm going to speak just a little bit more on core value number seven, leading with kindness, because as Lynette just said, that's one aspect of it. Uh, when we set these core values up, we set them up in a way that you could take these core values and train in your organizations on a broad scale. So when you say lead with kindness, you can take that a million different directions. Um, one way I like to apply core value number seven is within our organization as a distributor who is trying to build this to make a few thousand bucks a month or maybe replace their income. Like you're, you're, in other words, you're treating this as a business, okay? You've got, you've got bigger goals than just getting your product for free. And hey, that's fine. If you're out there, you're a part of this team, and you're like, hey, I just want to share this with a few people. I just kind of you know, would like to make a few bucks. We are so happy that you are a part of this organization, and we hope we can give you guys value every week uh, as a part of this team. But they are, there are some of you that want to do bigger things, and one of the things that you must do in order to grow a big business is lead with kindness. You just don't know what's going on with people in your organization. And sometimes they're, they're just not going to do what they say they're going to do. Or uh, they're, they're, they, they don't back up their talk with action. And never is it appropriate that we get upset with our organization, ever. The moment you become upset with your organization, you have made it about you. Your goals have become priority over your organization, and I can promise you it will hinder your growth. It will slow down your team. You cannot go wrong with leading with kindness. Uh, the people... The people who have the largest organizations are people who have the least amount of drama in their organization, more paddles in the water. That's another core value. And so what I will tell you guys is this. Um, I will tell you that if you're going to lead with kindness in your organization, instead of getting frustrated, get fascinated. Now, we talked about that not too long ago. But this is an area you need to apply and we are applying. Instead of getting frustrated, get fascinated. Um, there, there is always going to be certain levels of frustration in your network marketing business, just like any other business. As Eric Worre says, it's not perfect. It's just a better way, right? It's not a better way for everyone, right? But it is a better way for you. It is a better way for us. And... I'm telling you, you're going to have to get fascinated with the areas of your business that frustrate you. Um, we've got a lot of material to get in here, but to give you just a little concept of this, I love fishing, love being on the water. And we went out yesterday for eight hours and caught one fish and it was like a trash fish, right? I was beyond frustrated yesterday. You weren't fascinated? I'm, I'm fascinated today. <laughs> Okay, and at one at, at a certain point yesterday, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna just drink some beer, and I'm gonna get fascinated with what's going on in the water today because it wasn't fish catching. Okay, we were fishing, not catching yesterday. My point is, I have become fascinated with a few elements. We went for a specific fish yesterday, and they just weren't on my end of the hook. What kind of fish are you fishing for in your network marketing business? What's your goals? And there's going to be frustrating things and you must get fascinated with it in order to achieve those goals because it's just there's going to be parts of your business. So just thought we would share that, guys. There's a saying that you should plan, then do, and review. And the mistake many people in traditional business or out as employees, um, they just plan, do, and review once a year at the end of the year, Okay. I think you should be planning and doing and reviewing daily. Like Lynette and I have always said the most important goals are your daily goals. It's the most important goal. It's more important than the weekly goal. It's more important than the monthly goal. And it's certainly more important than the monthly goal. Because if you hit the daily goals, the, everything else kind of falls, mm -hmm. falls in place. 
And so we would highly encourage you that not only are you naturally planning and doing and reviewing today, but you do that on a daily basis and uh, a monthly basis so that you don't get too far off course. Like, you know, they, they refer to your goals as a GPS, right? And uh, you've probably been a part of trainings where they talk about an airplane, how when an airplane leaves New York and is flying to San Francisco, that it is always off course. It's always off course, but it's just by a small amount because the plane is constantly, the autopilot is constantly making small little changes. They don't get way off course before they make their change. If you guys were at the training in Elite Academy, when Andy Andrews talked about their compass and how they went out on a boat and their, their compass was just off by, I think, one or two percent. Mm -hmm. But it, it was 100 miles. And when you're off two degrees at 100 miles, you miss by a, you don't even see the oil rig that they were looking for, right? And they ran out of gas on the ocean. So we don't want to miss, guys. We don't want to miss on this long journey. If you are the person trying to replace your income, you don't want to miss by one or two percent. And really, guys, that's the part that fascinates me about this business is the difference between the people who make tens of thousands of dollars a month and a week versus the people that make ten dollars a week. And it's just it's just the little things. It's not big things. It's the little things, but it's the consistent um corrections and being fascinated instead of getting frustrated and kind of channeling that thought. So as a team, guys, I'll tell you true blue. Um, one of our plans in 2018 was that we were going to relaunch team true blue and man, have we done that in a massive way. So high fives to all of you out there. High five yourself, drop some high five emojis in here. High five your team, tag your team for those that um, just really were a part of linking arms with Team True Blue this year. We really um, talked to our leaders, got the plan in place, and said, you guys ready to do this? Y'all ready to relaunch this thing? And we did in a big way. And uh, our website is a uh, visual evidence of that. That thing was reborn this year. The website has completely been revamped, and it is a functioning masterpiece in my in my. Uh, opinion for how we support this team as well as a tool that we knew needed to be developed and that is crazyyellowpill.com what I mean that was part of the process this year of providing some tools for the team that could launch all of your business um, one of our goals Lynette and I goals always uh, one of the top goals is creating leadership and we certainly saw that this year we broke Many, many new elite ranks. We've got a new pro eights, new pro nines in the team. Um, emerging social media rock stars have joined our team and are building through the ranks. So we um, you know, would encourage you guys to link arms with your leaders in Team True Blue. This team is moving at a fast pace, guys. And um, you know, on the topic of planning and doing and reviewing, I, I can't help but think about John Maxwell and some of the things that he's helped us with this this year. Um, we got to sit in the sit with John twice this year, mm -hmm. like in the same room um, with a very small group of people. Um, I I almost feel like we're kind of buddies with him. Like we see him now, and he knows us by first name. He kind of knows our story a little bit, um, and. Most of his processes revolve around just doing the same things over and over and over. Everything John has done, he'll tell you, has been accomplished by doing five things. And I, ha I write them down, but first of all, he reads, he reads every day. Then he thinks every day. Then he writes every day. And he files, so he has organization about the things he writes. And uh, lastly, he asks questions. And he does those five things every day, over and over and over and over and over again. And that's how he's able to accomplish whatever he sets out to accomplish for the year. And our business 
should be no different. You should have a simple process that you do over and over and over again that creates um, at the end result what you wanted to accomplish, right? That you're able to hit those goals. And um, Lynette and I were kind of going over this. I don't know if you want to jump in on some of this stuff or, or if you want me to just run with it. Um, but there are some essentials to... Um, I'm laughing because I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I would love to talk about this, but I can't see out of this eye. And she's got her glasses over there. I told her she should put her glasses uh, on, but no, I mean, if, I'll put my glasses on. I just, y'all are used to seeing me in contacts, and I don't normally wear glasses. And I guess these aren't my favorite glasses. And so there you go. There's my glasses. Okay. You want to wear glasses? To, I hope so you, you feel think good? I look smart. So, I got some readers right here. You want to both wear glasses? There you go. There's my glasses. I'm now 47? Yeah. yeah, I'm 47. So I've got some glasses too now. Well, but I'm not allowed to wear my contacts while this silly eye situation is going on. So <laughs> anyway, now I can be apart. <laughs> She's crossing her arms. Okay. So where are we at? The essentials of this business. One of the things um, John says, number one, when you're creating your list of five, okay, this is this is how, because maybe your next question is, okay, great, that's John's five things, but what about how do I get my five things, right? He said there's some essential things you have to outline, and number one is you have to know what you want to accomplish. Okay, well, that's that's simple. That's like your goal, right? You, you need to know what you want to accomplish, but... Also, he said that you are need you need to focus. And the reason I'm kind of combining these things together is he said you're trying to chop down one tree, not ten. Now the five things, guys, his his illustration is if you wanna if you wanna chop a tree down, you go to the tree and you just hit it five times. One, two, three, four, five. You don't chop at it for five hours in one day and make yourself so sore that you can't come back the next day and do it. You, it's just five swings, right? And if you hit that tree, no, ba no matter how big the tree is, so you guys might have, some might have small goals, small tree. Some of you might have massive goals, massive tree. It doesn't matter the size of the tree. If you hit the tree every day, five times, will the tree fall eventually? And the answer is yes. Now, John kind of breaks that down. And uh, one of the things is you have to focus, right? And he would say in the trainings to us, you have to hit the tree in the same spot. You can't hit the tree way over here and then way over here. It's going to take you much, 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 much longer. You have to focus and focus on cutting one tree down too, not 10 trees. So your goal, guys, although you can have daily goals, monthly goals, you need to kind of have that big overall goal too, and it needs to be one thing. And I'm going to tell you guys, the biggest mistake I see in network marketing is people get so caught up on their volume, their volume, when that should not be the biggest goal. Because it's almost like getting caught up on how much money you're making without being more concerned about your service and how it's, you know, like the product that you actually have, right? Like if the product's good and your service is good, you won't be able to, you can't outrun the money, right? Too many people focus on the money. And so don't focus on the volume, focus on something else. And then you're going to be able to um, be more productive, like hitting the, the same spot and not chopping 10 trees down going after one tree. Well, yeah, and if your focus is accomplishing those five things, whatever you outline them to be on a daily basis, then you will get to where you want to go depending on the, the size of the tree, right? The other thing that he talked about was making sure that you're using the right tools, right? When you, that, that should be a part of when you outline what your five things are that you're gonna do on a daily basis, you need to have the right equipment for the job. You, you have to know that in advance. So going out and trying to cut down a tree or hit a tree five to, times a day with a hammer, not gonna accomplish what you'd accomplish with an ax. So it's important that you've outlined the right tools as well. 
Yeah, um, and consistency is another thing that he said you're gonna have to do. And that yet again, that's a thing that we see in this business all the time, is people come in, I'm gonna be a pro 10, and they just kill it for a week or a month. And then before long, the production's down. And so that's natural. It's, it's okay to come in and have massive, massive uh, activity. That's a good thing, right? That means you got someone excited. Ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. That's awesome. What we see though, is that people will do that, then they maybe don't get the results they thought they were gonna get, they get frustrated, and instead of getting fascinated, they quit, okay? And so you must stay consistent every day in these five things. That's the beauty of these five things. They're simple. And it's something that you know that you have to do every day and you can do with whatever. If you've only got 30 minutes a day to build your life managed business, then make sure those five things you can accomplish in 30 minutes. Okay. Or maybe you've got an hour, but make sure you outline your five things so that you can accomplish that in that given amount of time. It may be invite, it may be follow-up, it may be databasing, it may be personal development, it may be um, you know, events and recognition. It could be a number of different things, but those five things must be done consistently. And I, that might be the biggest, when I just said earlier to open this call up, you know, it's that the people that, the difference people make a few bucks a day and the people that make thousands of bucks a day, one of those small little things is consistency. Well, when you were talking about John Maxwell and his rule of five, you know, he has said that people will ask him, well, you say that you, you write every day and file and, you know, read and think and all those things, but do you do it like on Christmas? And he's like, every day. Well, what about like on your birthday? Every day. Well, what about on vacation? Every day. That's why John Maxwell is John Maxwell. That's why he has, you know, people go, how, how have you been able to write that many books? Every day. That's what he does every day. So when people sit back and go, well, how did you accomplish what you've accomplished? You guys, he does it at 5.30 in the morning and it doesn't last all day. It lasts till he's done with his list of five, right? So on some days, maybe that's 30 minutes. Maybe on other days, it's a couple hours. But the point is, he doesn't stop until he's accomplished his five. And so the people that you look at in network marketing and you go, how, how did you do that? That's how. It's doing consistent behaviors every day even when you don't want to, even when you're on vacation, even when it's a Sunday, even when it's a holiday, it's doing it every day. And that consistency takes you where you want to go. Yeah, if you're not doing it every day, then, and I know we're now, I know we're now talking to a smaller group of people in our team. Okay. I mean, I, mentally, my mind, this is my wheelhouse though, guys. It's where our mind was at the very beginning of this business. Um, and I have to pull myself back in many, many times when I get into trainings like this because I realize that the vast majority of people in this business um, are here just to make a few hundred bucks. And that is, I can't tell you how amazing that is, that we can provide you a way to make a few hundred bucks. But the conversation we're having right now are for the people who want to make a few thousand bucks a month, the people who want to replace their income. And it's every day. Like that's, that's the difference. I mean, that's like one of the biggest difference makers there is. It's, you know, we got this thing that started going around a couple years ago. Like, what's your word? What's your word for this year? What's going to be your word? And John did that when we were with him the beginning of this year. Like, what's your word? And I'm just thinking that would be a good word every day. <laughs> that should be a word. Like, what's your word for this, this year every day? Because if, if what you are trying to accomplish in Life Vantage is not important enough to you that you're willing to do it every day, you're never going to make it. It's not going to happen. As E.T. says, Eric Thomas, like you got to want this as bad as oxygen. Like it's, it's just the way it is. You know, some people say, you know, that if you want, if you want to achieve some things in life that are big things, you got to be obsessed with them. Don't take that the wrong way. 
That doesn't mean that you become unbalanced. It doesn't mean you throw your family life away, your spiritual life away, whatever is important, but it has to be every day. Like we eat every day, right? Unless you're on some type of fasting, whatever, okay? There's always those one or two percenters that go, no, I don't eat every day. I, you, do you breathe every day? Okay, do you go to the bathroom every day? There's certain things you just have to do every day. And if you want this to be something that pays you residually for the rest of your life, you need to get consistent every day on those five things. And those five things, guys, they need to revolve around one goal, right? Don't have this very broad thing and that goal can't be volume. I know we've kind of got off into the weeds here, but... I love talking about this topic because it's what people miss. They, they miss this thing by this much and they think, oh, I can't do this. And it's, it's because you did it great four days this week and you missed it three days this week. And that's the difference. That's the difference. It's the small things that make this thing happen. So, um, and the last thing John says is you got to do it until it's achieved. Like, that consistency, you just go and you keep going and keep going. If your goal is smaller, smaller tree, the smaller tree will fall before the bigger tree does, right? You cannot, you cannot get uh, sidetracked and, and quit because obviously um, that's also a difference maker for a lot of people that never achieve is they get, they get frustrated and they just quit, right? Instead of getting fascinated. A lot of the things that we've said are kind of co-mingling here a little bit. Um, let's wrap this up with one little thought that I've got, and then Lynette, you can close the call out. Um, I should have started this at the beginning of the call, um, but that is, uh, we did a lot of work inside of teamtrueblue.org. We've also launched crazyyellowpill.com, but there is also a big part of our business that does this business online, specifically through social media and more specifically Facebook. Our largest group on Facebook that we're using to build this business is Life Biohacked. And now we are transitioning a lot of our manpower, mind, brain power into how we can make Life Biohacked a better tool for you. Uh, Gary Stern right now is the person that's really putting a lot of hours in and time into making Life Biohacked a place that is easier to find material. If you have not been in Life Biohacked in the last couple days, go in there and look at the units. Click on units and you'll see that Gary has gone in there um, and really put a lot of organization into there so that you can quickly add and tag people into these uh, posts that are amazing posts. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Gary Stern for a lot of the work that's being done there. Gary's not the only person involved in the project. A lot of your elite leaders are involved in this project as well as some of our up and coming rock stars that are just killing it on social media. You guys, we've got a lady up in Michigan, her name is Holly, that has started the month out by hitting as a pro two. She started December as a pro two and she's finished December as a pro four. Ooh. How about that, right? <laughs> so. We've got a number of up and coming rock stars that are a part of this organization that uh, you're gonna meet soon enough that are helping behind the scenes. But thank you, Gary, for all the hard work there and everybody else that's involved in that project. We are elevating our game, guys. There is, there is nothing standing in your way in 2019 for hitting every goal. There's nothing. You've got all the tools. You've got all the tools right at your fingertips within this team and that was one of our goals when 2018 closed that you were going to be able to not have any excuse. There are no more excuses, just time to make money. So um, on that note, take it on that note, you guys, I want to leave you with a little thought from Tony Robbins. Failure is never a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness. If you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish, the tools are all there for you. Everything is right at your fingertips. You just may have to, to search a little bit to find exactly what you're looking for, but it's not a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness, which means you have to take full responsibility for where you're at and where you end up. Kicking off this new year, I hope you have outlined what you'd like to accomplish. I hope you have outlined what those five things that you intend on doing every day um, because 
There's a lot of people who do, and those people will reap the benefits. It's going to be an amazing year. Um, and just one last reminder, we usually do this at the beginning of the call, but this week, the, the opportunity webinar will be taking place on Wednesday. Next week, we'll resume with our Monday night webinars. Um, we just did it because of the holidays that we've had here. So anyway, thank you guys for jumping on here today and for all that you do. We're so thankful to be working alongside of you. Um, and we hope that you have an amazing year end. Close out this night strong, you guys. It's not over till it's over. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, this Saturday virtual workshop, we've got uh, Kim and Travis Hall lined up for that, as well as Gary Stern lined up for that. And we may have some corporate people, maybe. Um, the app is, a, there's some new stuff in the app that has just been, guys, phenomenal. Uh, just, you, we'll maybe get into that this Saturday, but if you don't have an event lined up for Saturday, make your plans. Uh, let's launch uh, January with this workshop. It's going to be a great tool for you to build your business. Um, and as Lynette just said, be resourceful, right? Be resourceful and uh, use what's available to you because the resources are here within Team True Blue. That's what we've worked so hard to do for you guys to set up to 2019 as the year. This is the breakout year, guys. We are excited for all of you, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm like super pumped for this year. We've got we've got some big things that are happening for for all of us in this team, and we're just excited. We could keep on talking, but you guys are ready to go into your day. So thank you guys for being on. Amazing Thanks, group of people. You guys have a great day. Bye bye. Take care.